Edgar lectured us about the need for a metaphysics-free morality. Morality based on something physical, rather than metaphysical. A bullshit-free morality. Forget rewards and punishments. Those sort of things are for the nuts. Being kind due to our fear of God is expediency, not morality. And anyway, what could possibly be worse than heaven, he said. Edgar believed that a bullshit free morality would come into being when we looked honestly at death. <coughs> All four popes met in Helsinki. It was the first time since the beginning of the Great Schism that they were all together. They put their names to a document that damned Edgar Malroy and anyone who worked for him to hell for all eternity. It was the only thing the popes could seem to agree on. I will be no more, so will you. We are mortal. We are in deep shit, and that's the point. We are in the shit together. We are all going to die. Everyone should wear watches that every now and again beep and have written on their liquid crystal displays, You are about to die! Because we are. Such watches would, in a small way, remind us that we are all finite, that we will all die, and that consequently we ought to live for the moment. Only religious nuts want to die. Early Christians were queuing up to get in the amphitheatre, literally queuing up. They failed to see their own finitude. They believed they would exist forever. They thought that things can be put off. Well, they can't. Every time you meet someone, think, this person is not perfect. Is not just how they want to be. This person will never complete all his or her projects. This person is not loved by friends and family as much as he or she would like. This person regrets, misses. This person will sometime soon be dead. Perhaps in the next half hour. Perhaps in 30 years. Who knows? <coughs> Edgar Malroy told us to imagine everyone we ever met dead. He told us to imagine the blood falling away from their faces. To imagine that their feet would never walk again. To imagine their eyes closed permanently and their eyelashes perfectly still. He told us to imagine their clothes hanging neatly on wires in coroner's offices. And if you don't feel, after you've thought these things, after you have accepted completely the other person's finitude, like hugging them, well, then you're dead already. The lecture theatre was completely still. The only sound we could hear was the muffled noise of the former priests outside Who Knows College shouting themselves blue in the face about how Edgar had tricked the faithful into handing over their money. After his lecture on death, Edgar threw peanuts to the former priests from a window of Who Knows College. Skeptic Tower was bombed three more times before the end of October. Edgar lived through all the attacks, sustaining only minor injuries. The Catholic Church of Lithuanians in London went bust. Shintoism stopped being practiced altogether and the number of Pentecostal churches in the United States of America dropped by 88%. On the 30th of September, the Society of Friends stopped collective worship. The house uh, church movement died out. 100 Lutheran churches all over the planet were put, uh, were put up for sale, and the spiritualist church gave up the ghost. Pope doms were being sold for £24.99 a go. A fourth digging machine was, was completed, named Shiva, 
and ships to Walvis Bay on the Tropic of Capricorn. From there it moved overland to the centre of the Kalahari Desert in what had formerly been part of Botswana. A little later, Skepticism Inc. completed a fifth digging machine which Edgar called Buddha. Buddha was sent to what had been before Edgar had bought it part of Mongolia. There it began carving out a series of kilometre wide trenches in the Gobi Desert. Trenches that were to be filled with water from the Sea of Japan. It never happened. 